This isn't my speech. Um, uh, before I jump in, I really want to thank Gump for having Joe play right before me. Uh, Brian, I think you had Gump last year, and I got Joe. Uh, my wife made me feel really comfortable after the first song she leaned over, and she goes, that's going to be a really tough act to follow. So I wasn't nervous to begin with, and I, it really was great. But anyhow, thank you, everybody, and thank you, Brian. Uh, I can't begin to express my gratitude for this recognition. I am sincerely honored and humbled to accept this as your 2012 honoree. Everything we've watched and heard tonight, is, it's just profoundly emotional. I'm a boys don't cry kind of guy, but for me, every event has moved me tremendously and brought tears to my eyes. I can't explain it, but outside of my family and friends, I've never felt more blessed to be connected to a group of people, most of whom I've never met. It's daunting to be honored, but their incredible dignity and love strengthened through shared heartbreak and joy has empowered me to fully embrace tonight. Mark and Gump, I think you guys are hiding back there. Uh, you and your families are amazing, and your work with the Epilepsy Foundation of Greater LA is remarkable, and I am proud to help in a small way. This really is a highlight in my life, and I appreciate all the love and support I've been given. Thank you, all you, for coming. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people here tonight. Everyone from my company is here, and I swear I didn't coerce any of them to come. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Some great friends are here, too, many who have come a long way to be with me tonight, and my spectacular wife, Kimberly, and my awesome kids, Enzo and Dante. You've made tonight a blast, guys. Thank you. Uh, taking part in this makes you reflect on your role in life. It's funny, my, my teenage years were spent largely trying to prove I was an adult. Since then, I've tried hard to avoid thinking of myself as one. It just seemed, I don't know, too old or something. In my job, I get to dream up fantasies, bigger explosions, and more ways to crash more cars than you can possibly imagine. But being honored means I have no choice but to accept that finally I have to grow up and be an adult. I was told this was going to be one of the most wonderful evenings, one things to happen to me. Well, uh, cue the Kevlar, because unfortunately, all too often in the movie business, when you're told that something really great's going to happen to you, usually is about the moment you're going to get well and truly clobbered. But thankfully, Mark and Gump and Todd and Brian, you were right. I've gotten to meet incredible people and see incredible things. My connection to this cause has only gotten deeper, and this endeavor is something I will always feel passionately about but I also have a personal reason for being here. A close and dear old friend of mine came today from Connecticut to support me, Edwin Everett's. We call him Wynn. He was my college roommate. <clears throat> he was my college roommate, and I still have his stereo and copy of Quadrophenia, Quadrophenia to prove it, Wynn. For the last 21 years, his son Nicholas and his family have struggled with seizures, the scary unknown, and many of the effects that are part of this affliction. I wanted to learn more about what people go through and reached out to win. Getting to reconnect in this most personal way and feel his feelings has been an incredible gift. Thanks for sharing with me, old pal. I love that you're part of this tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Finding a cure is, you know, I, something I'm going to talk a little bit from a layman's perspective a little bit because we've heard a lot of things, but finding a cure is obviously to be desperately hoped for, but pioneering and even learning of alternative treatments has been incredibly difficult, incredibly difficult for people. Partly it's because the puzzle to figure out what is going on is one of the most complex imaginable. This has been exacerbated by the fact that there haven't been enough doctors to share common experience and insights. As we add doctors, we are creating the ability for them to combine their efforts and findings, and hopefully that's going to help a lot, and I think it will. And it's also equally true for parents seeking answers, you know. Um, the social network has helped them find other parents in different treatments, and so there's begun a dialogue that I think 10 years ago didn't really exist for them. And, and thankfully, those kind of social outreach programs are getting our support as well. Recently, I was given the opportunity to uh, visit the Pediatric Epilepsy Clinic at the LA County USC Medical Center. 
I got that right. Did I get that right, Doc? Uh, previously, uh, children seen in this clinic didn't have any spe specialists to manage their care. Now these children have an entire team, in part because of care and cure funding from this foundation. While there, I met an amazing man, Dr. Arthur Partikian. You're an incredible doc. You blew me away. I mean, he, he really blew me away. It is, uh, it's astonishing to watch him work. Um, he's presented with patients that have minimal or no prior medical history available. Um, then I watched him apply a staggering amount of knowledge, I mean, uh, across so many disciplines to diagnose and treat his patient. His passion and commitment is inspiring. He and his colleagues are truly like knights attacking the most daunting of obstacles. I saw a small sliver of what patients and their families face as well. I, well, most of us here tonight live in a world where resources are usually available to us. Almost 100% of the people who come to the clinic come by public transportation and have little or no health insurance to help. And the need for our help is enormous. There was one statistic that really blew me away. One out of every 100 people will be diagnosed with ep epilepsy in their lifetime which I think it's a staggering statistic. It, it's beyond my, uh, my understanding of what this was. And, um, but beyond your ger generosity that you gave tonight, uh, it's often difficult to find another way to help. As I talk to people, I realize there is something each of us can do on a practical level. Seizures are scary and embarrassing for the child, the parent, the sibling, and the bystander. It means that families tend to become isolated and social activities diminish for fear of both the possible physical danger and the personal uh, embarrassment and discomfort of all involved. And that's something we can all help with. Last year on the set of Transformers, a man had a seizure. It was scary. It wasn't clear what was happening. He couldn't tell you what was happening. Some of us with limited first aid experience or simple compassion, I don't know, moved towards him to try and help. Most stood silent or moved slightly back. They weren't doing anything wrong. They were scared or they were feeling inadequate. When his seizure ended, I became conscious of his embarrassment, yet none of us had judged him in any way. I also saw that he was aware of, our, of the awkwardness of many around him, which only made him feel more uncomfortable. I hope that I will always be someone who will move towards someone in need. I hope tonight's program encourages everyone to do the same. So let's make a pact. Let's unite and destroy this wall of fear and of embarrassment. We can do this. Uh, thanks for coming this evening, and please keep supporting this incredible organization. Have a great night, everybody.